Tonight, exposure goes undercover in private colleges that attract foreign students to Britain. And some students aren't happy. I, I won't pay because I have paid already. Okay. But I know what's the law. I think they are cheating with us. Staff admit they're letting their students down. I put myself in their shoes, obviously, I don't say. But those are the students. Students sold courses that didn't happen. How long do you think you have to look probably, for the time? Probably uh, five minutes. So it's one year now, and now you say five minutes. But will they get their money back? I even argued that, that why did you take fee from me if you knew the course had been cancelled? A lot of money was spent. It was about £5,000. My father has really lost his health because of it. I wish that I should never have gone to UK. There's threatening behaviour on campus. I know you've got a problem, but it's absolutely When the Home Office inspectors turn up, they're not exactly welcome with everyone. There's no bastards of you. What? And we confront the manager of a college. Why have you still got a sign up there? I'm a Why have you still got Simon? Do you want to just finish your call? Um, I mean, I've got other questions. I'm also interested in. This is our island story. Open, diverse, and welcome. This year, our cash-strapped government has been keen to aid our fragile recovery by showcasing products and services made in Britain. This glossy video shows how the UK boasts that we excel in education. The British Council says we have four out of six of the world's top universities in the UK. Today, there is no limit on the number of students who can come from India to study at British universities. No limit at all. All you need is a basic English qualification and a place at a British university. There are over 1,700 academic institutions that the Home Office is allowed to sponsor international students including the UK's top universities like Cambridge and hundreds of private colleges. What all these institutions have in common is the prized status of highly trusted sponsor conferred by the government. But an anonymous source from within the Home Office, who's close to the process of checking these sponsors, has told us that highly trusted doesn't always mean trustworthy. The reason I felt I needed to speak out is because there are too many colleges who are deemed highly trusted, who are exploiting genuine students who want to come to the UK to study. The highly trusted status, for me, doesn't really mean a great deal and certainly wouldn't, for me, mean that the teaching is going to be worthwhile. The scale of the problem ranges from one room above a takeaway, which could never be perceived to be an academic institution, to reputable looking premises. The Home Office is struggling to inspect colleges and educational institutions. There's not enough staff to go out and do the compliance visits. The system is just too easy to abuse currently. I would say that it's broken and it needs a complete overhaul. The last time the Home Office produced figures, a third of international student applications were to private colleges. For several months, we've been investigating a college with highly trusted status. The rather grand sounding Academy de London. They have a high tech looking website with video effects. Their slogan is the transmission of civilization. But on an internet discussion page, we found serious allegations about the college holding onto deposits after students have been refused visas to enter the UK. We travel to Pakistan to meet up with the people behind the posts. Student Usman is visiting independent agent Ashraf, who handled his application to Academy de London. 
but is no longer referring students to ADL. When Usman's visa got turned down, they expected to get his money back. So, so what is the condition of my case? We are in contact with the Academy in London, pressing them hard for a refund of your deposit. And the universal practice is this, that after visa refusal, student deposits are refunded. The college is saying again and again that uh, we will not refund your fees. You must have go to court. I'm sitting in Pakistan, so I can only feel angry. I've also lost money and uh, I have also lost a year of my education. So it is a so bad thing. I have stopped UK admissions, totally. I cannot make students suffer such huge loss. When we visited Academy to London, we discovered it's above a cafe and a beauty salon in Walthamstow, North East London. I was just going to ask if it would be possible to have a look around there. Yeah, of course. Sure. We've sent in our undercover reporter, Shai. She's taking a tour of the academy by one of the lecturers. It's not like, you know, like a college which is at the top of a fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Shai is posing as a trainee teacher. Hi, um, I'm here to start work experience for the week. Okay. We are a very small college, like 300 of maybe 400, 500. But it only has five small classrooms. Shai is sitting in on a class. The teacher is having to work in cramped conditions. So Shai helps to move chairs to make extra room. The next day, our reporter discovers that to get your college ID, you have to pay an extra fee of £250 on top of your tuition fee. Shai is helping out with Academy de London student support. Um, I'm just here for a few weeks. If you have any problems or you need any help, when she's approached anything, by an unhappy customer. Okay. You know, I have paid my full fee, but they didn't give me the ID. Have you spoken to them? Yes, yeah, we'll pay the money is 250. Yeah, I think everyone pays 250. For, for what? Uh, it's just when you start here. Yeah, I know, but I paid already for full pay. If I pay 250 for what? For what? They are cheating with us. I, I won't pay because I paid already. Okay. But I know what's the law. But I think they are cheating with us. Okay. They are cheating. Once you've paid your surprise fees, it's time to start learning. But that might be a problem. During her time inside Academy to London, Shai is told by manager Suman Koti that a lot of the classes are cancelled a lot of the time. You don't have class today, you have a chance to come. So you can just try to argue. This time, it's because the teacher hasn't turned up. Today, your lecturer is not coming, so on Wednesday, and yeah, so no class for today? No class for today. And uh, tomorrow? Tomorrow, yes. But the next day, again, a teacher hasn't turned up. You don't have their class? Shai finds out, with their classes cancelled, these three students are filling their time in the UK, working illegally. What are you going to do for the rest of the day? We're working. OK. Work. Are you? Yeah, working. And what? Fish and chips. Oh, OK. Working in a grocery shop, first office. Two jobs. Two jobs. <laughs> okay. A different day, and two international students are at reception who registered for courses at Academy de London months ago, but haven't been attending any classes at all. Why did you think somebody's on this? They're waiting for the visa, but if there's any inquiry from one office, what would I call Immigration rules mean that Academy de London students are not allowed to work. But Shai discovers that Academy de London's manager, Suman, is aware that his students are working and he admits to helping cover up for them. So uh, now at least weekly once so twice in a week he will just come show, hello sir, how are you, I'm here, please put my attendance, maintain my record. So at least if police say, last week, until last week I can see my attendance records, he was here, it might be he's working somewhere. So they may consider that the student is genuine going to the college. Yeah. So we showed our footage to leading immigration law expert Sally McEwen. 
there's a clear breach of the highly trusted sponsor guidance on, on this issue. Um, if there are 10 consecutive non-attendances by the particular student, they have to be reported within 10 working days to the Home Office and the Home Office will then take action against that student. Academy de London held their highly trusted status for nearly two and a half years. Six weeks ago, as we were completing our seven-month investigation, the college had its highly trusted status withdrawn. We asked the Home Office about our whistleblower's comments on the system of granting colleges highly trusted status. Immigration Minister Mark Harper said, The previous system neither controlled immigration nor protected legitimate students from poor quality sponsors. Too many institutions were selling immigration, not education. This year we have conducted over 450 compliance visits to educational institutions. And since we have tightened our rules, over 600 colleges have lost the ability to bring in international students. We wrote to and repeatedly called Academy de London to put our allegations to them, but we got no response. So we decided to pay them a visit. The first thing we spot is that Academy de London is still displaying a notice in their window stating that they're a highly trusted sponsor. Our undercover reporter Shai calls up using a different name. Hi, um, this is Alice, I called earlier. And asks when Academy de London's manager, Suman, is going to arrive in the office. OK, all right then. Thank you. Bye. Then we wait in the rain. Finally, he arrives. Are you Suman? Are you, are you, is your name Suman? No, uh, my name's Tom Randall, I'm from ITV Exposure. We wrote a letter to you, ITV Exposure Programme. Okay. So um, we're filming you now. We wrote a letter to you about Academy de London, which is your business. And we, we'd firstly, I'd like to know, how come you've still got a sign up there saying that you're highly trusted when you're not on Tier 4 list anymore? Why have you still got a sign up there? Why have you still got Suman? Do you want to just finish your call? Um, I mean, I've got other questions. I'm also interested in, why did you cover up for your students? Uh, when they were working illegally? Why did, why did you cover up for your students when you were working illegally? No, you weren't, though. I, I mean, how did, how did you manage to uh, retain your Tier 4 status? Academy de London's manager, Suman Cote, has still not responded to the issues raised by our investigation. We're looking at private colleges that specialise in recruiting international students at both ends of the spectrum, big and small. We've also heard a lot of student complaints about a very different college to Academy de London, the London School of Business and Finance. LSBF is a major brand for international students who want to study in the UK. They say they've taught nearly 40,000 students from around the world in the nine years since they were set up. LSBS's most recent company records show fees received of over 20 million pounds. They have some big names featured on their website and their sophisticated marketing includes slick online videos. Tony Blair paid a visit and was interviewed by former education secretary and now LSBF guest lecturer, David Blunkett. Educational technological, technical skills are the only way people are going to get on and do well. And so was the UK's most famous businessman, Sir Richard Branson. I'm very pleased to be able to introduce you to the London School for Business and Finance because uh, they are entrepreneurs per excellence. They've just received, actually, in 2013, uh, the Queen's Award for Enterprise, so we're celebrating that at the moment. But we look behind the scenes at the college that calls itself the World's Business School. One of the places where LSBF recruits students is the Indian subcontinent. Pat 
Hashim Chima is our reporter in Lahore, Pakistan. He's going undercover, posing as a student, to find out how LSBF sells itself. This is LSBF's Lahore regional office. It's based in a converted upmarket house. After a short wait in the posh reception area, Hashim's introduced to the deputy regional manager. She tries to sell our reporter a place on a course accredited by LSBF's partner, the University of Lincoln. That sounds different to the criteria for scholarships that LSBF mentioned on their website. Here they say, scholarships are awarded according to various criteria, including academic merit and the socio-economic status of a student, not on a first-come, first-served basis. Education point of view, sir, if you look at LSB, it's very well known or most proving institute in the UK. The best thing is that LSB is one of the best teachers in the UK. Okay, college education, the answer is no university. Okay, sir, the university is not different. Basically, our different universities are the partners in the UK. और आप लीजेंड के स्टूडेंट हो गए आप एलएसबीएफ के स्टूडेंट हो आपको पढ़ा रहे हैं लेकिन डिग्री आपको जो मिलेगी वो लेकर जो लेकर नहीं हो सकती है मैंने प्रॉब्लम नहीं हो सकती है वो नो साइबर तो मिल गया वहाँ पढ़ने के लिए एक्सेप्ट दैट लास्ट बिट इसन्ट ट्रू द फादर ऑफ द नेशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान मोहम्मद अली जिना LSBF's partner got university status in 1992. It became the University of Lincoln in 2001, 53 years after Jinnah's death. LSBF told us that the agent's Ali Jinnah comment was an error, not a deliberate misrepresentation. Scholarships are awarded in accordance with the principles on its website. Not all of the first 120 applicants to enrol would be entitled to one and the agent was wrong if she had appeared to suggest otherwise, which was not intended. To find out more, we're sending in a team of undercover reporters to take up a range of different roles within LSBF, including in the admissions department and in student support, both in London and in Birmingham. Our reporter Katie gets a job in the admissions team that deals with international applications. On her first day, Katie's supervisor is telling her about scholarships for a two-year business HND course that's listed as costing a total of £18,000, £9,000 a year. Now, this course is technically £18,000, but that's a bit steep. So we offer them scholarships to sort of entice them, say, look how much you're saving if you come with us. So, they're selling the course at 3895 per year. Compared to 18,000? Yeah. Because we're, ne we're never going to sell it for 18,000. It's like no one's ever going to pay that for a two-year course. So. so, do you give everyone scholarships? Yeah. They've got a special price. Salima Morji is an expert in education law. We showed her our undercover footage concerning scholarships. Misrepresentation has a very specific meaning in law. It effectively means that one um, provides information to an individual to deliberately induce them to enter into a contract 
knowing full well that what they're saying is not true. LSBF told us the supervisor's comments were incorrect and were simply informal but uninformed banter. During Katie's employment, five international students were enrolled on this course without a scholarship. 21 others with a £500 scholarship and 461 home students at a lower fee without scholarships. They say they do not seek to entice students by offering scholarships other than on merit. It's our undercover reporter Katie's third day, working in the international admissions team at LSBF. News has arrived that the Home Office's UK border agency is doing an inspection. Katie's colleague doesn't seem to show a lot of respect for the Home Office, who gave the college their highly trusted status. They're here. They, they've been here today. Oh, wow. Why are they here? Just to check up. Just to make sure you have everything in order. Say that. That means it's good. Mm -hmm. If you see people running up and down, mm -hmm. they know it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> LSBF told us the language used in private by this junior staff member was not condoned but was the kind of light-hearted or melodramatic reaction one might expect in any organisation when a spot check is announced. LSBF has been subject to a number of UKBA spot checks with whom they have an excellent relationship, all of which gave them a clean bill of health. Next, students are demanding refunds. Where is your manager? Are you okay? There's something happening. Yeah, they're stealing my money here. I accidentally paid two tuition fees. Right. So obviously I should have only paid one. Yeah. And they approved my refund. Yeah. I've been waiting four months to get my refund. I've been wasting hours on fucking chasing him around. It's easier to get a meeting with the Prime Minister. Our reporter Sam is working in the London School of Business and Finance's new court building, which LSBF shares with another member of the LSBF group, St Patrick's College. On his third day in the job, Sam runs into an LSBF member of staff by the lifts. Hi, I'm Sam, by the way. Hi. So I've just started a new refund. Okay. Yeah. The following week, he walks into a row between the same member of staff and a student. Where is your manager? Are you okay? There's something happening. Yeah, they're stealing my money here. I accidentally paid two tuition fees. Right. So obviously I should have only paid one. Yeah. And they approved my refund. Yeah. I've been waiting four months to get my refund. I've been wasting hours on fucking chasing him around. It's easier to get a meeting with the Prime Minister. In the next 20 minutes, he meets another two students chasing refunds. Same problem. I requested it two weeks ago. And, and nothing, 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 right. nothing. You're an international student, are you? Yeah. Where are you from? Barbados. OK, and what are you studying? Finance. I see already applied for a refund two months. One of the reasons that an international student might need a refund is that their course is no longer available. But two days later, Sam meets an independent agent in the corridor. She's been chasing the money she's owed for nearly a year. What's the problem? About the refund. I'm the college agent. I provide the student. I would have to pay the student £3,000 from my pocket. What? You've been refunding the student? Refunding to the student because to keep the college reputation. And why did the students need a refund? Because the college could not provide the course. OK, let me go and get him. Oh, here he is. I was just going to come and get you. Yeah. Okay, no worries. I'll see you in the ground floor because I didn't actually look into your case here. I don't know. How long do you think you have to look probably, at my case? Probably uh, five minutes. Uh, it's one year now and now you said five minutes. No, it's been approved your refund. Okay, I'll see you in the ground floor. Okay. No, I want to sort out. No, but not here. Why there's, not here? There's no... Why not here? There's... Why not here? There's no place to speak no, to you. No, I can't speak with you here. So if you just come in, well, I don't meet anyone next to the toilet here. Last time when I came here, I spoke 
to you on the phone. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. I spoke to you on the phone. Look. I asked you Look. to meet in person, and you didn't want to meet me. I was kind of person. Yeah. If one walks into a shop and buys uh, buys goods, and then unhappy with those goods, you return them, you get a refund. That comes from the Supply of Sale of Goods and Services Act. And the relationship that the student enters into with uh, LSBF uh, falls squarely within the Act. They're purchasing a service uh, which, if the college is unable to offer, ultimately means that the money should be returned in a reasonable time frame, so talking about 7 to 14 days, where that money should be returned to the student. Katie's in her second week in the admissions department and being trained by another supervisor. He's telling her what happens when a course has been changed. We run courses based on numbers, so if we had 100 people that were registered for something and we no longer offer it, we offer them something else. It will change what they're actually, what they're doing. It's not really a problem. And can't they just get a refund if they don't want to do the course? We have a no refund policy. Well, we do give refunds, but it's very, very hard. It's like a six-month procedure a lot of the time, unless it's like properly awful or something. You it's must like, get some angry people. Yeah, but we don't deal with them because that and that's what they get paid for. So. LSBF told us they do not have a no refunds policy, and what the staff member said was wrong. He works in admissions, does not deal with refunds, and has little or no knowledge of these matters. Another reason that an international student might need a refund is because the Home Office has turned down their visa. Katie has read course application paperwork that states students will be refunded if their visa is rejected by the Home Office. She asks her colleagues about it. What happens if you issue the letter and then they get refused by the UKBA? Then they just get refused. But it says on the form. It says on the form that everyone will get a refund. It does. Because someone told me it definitely does. Because someone told me no refunds, and then I was reading the form and I was bored. Her supervisor calls over a more senior colleague. She said on the form summary it says that everyone's entitled to a refund. <laughs> it says. Well, it actually says yeah. you can have it. A refund. On the offer letter it says something like if you don't get whatever what advice you do, please. So it's not true. So it just takes like three years to get. Yeah, basically. By the time you've got a refund, like I don't know. I think they hope they're just gonna give up asking for it. I've had a look at the terms and conditions for LSBF and they do stipulate very clearly that a refund will be offered if a visa is not granted. Uh, so by not returning the money, uh, and I uh, suspect not returning the money within a prompt and reasonable time, that amounts to a breach of contract. LSBF told us their staff's comments to reporter Katie were completely at odds with the reality of the position and the secretly recorded incidents with the complaining students and agent painted a wholly inaccurate picture of their approach to refunds. They operate a clear refunds policy for course cancellations and visa refusals and have never improperly withheld refunds. They say over the past year they had administrative issues arising from a partner university losing its tier 4 license and the cancellation of some LSBF courses was beyond their control and led to some refunds being processed later than normal. But this backlog has now been almost entirely resolved. In Pakistan, we discovered the real cost of a refund not being returned. We travelled to Rawal Pindi, the home of Haider Ijaz. He'd always dreamt of getting a British education. He applied to LSBF and put down a big deposit to study accountancy and finance. But when he arrived in the UK, he discovered that his course had been cancelled. My consultant told me that my course has been cancelled and he can get me another course so I can come to England. I said I don't want to take this course. You can't do this to students 
tell them that their course has been cancelled and all of a sudden you force them to take another course. It's like when you're going for something, you must get that. Otherwise, there's no purpose to do it. The course was cancelled because LSBS partnership with London Metropolitan University broke down. So Hayder thought it would be straightforward to get his money back from a college listed as a highly trusted sponsor by the Home Office. A lot of money was spent. It was about £5,000. My father has really lost his health because of it. He doesn't have any job, not even a single penny to give back. If they can't return the money, that is insulting. That is, that is embarrassing for us. Finally, after eight months of chasing, LSBF confirmed that they would pay Hader his refund. LSBF told us that Hader had not submitted the documents required to process his claim until October. Hader insists that he had. Just waiting and waiting and writing mails to them. I tried to contact many of the places in England. Education Ministry transferred me to the Department of Business and Innovation Skills. They told me that this is a private college, so they cannot help me with it. Expect nahi kar rahi thi. Main bilkul bhi ki England mein aisa ho sakta hai. Ka wahan ka education system is tarah ka hoga. I I can say this that I have suicidal thoughts. I wish that I should never have gone to UK. The London School of Business and Finance has multiple sites and a turnover in the tens of millions. We've been to LSBF London, now we're on our way to Birmingham. The college attracts international students with its highly trusted sponsor status given to it by the Home Office. But LSBF also caters to British students. Our reporter Anya is working in student support at what the college describes on its website as the LSBF Birmingham campus. It is registered as a separate business with the name Finance Business Training, or FBT. There's a new intake in Birmingham. As our reporter Anya is posing as a representative of the college, a student approaches her to complain about a problem he's having. The student is beginning to question the quality of the college. It's an office block that's been opened by a couple of entrepreneurs as a college. What makes you say that? Obviously. Come on, nothing's running smoothly. Timetable's wrong. Teachers are not coming in. Ideas not there. It just makes you think. As part of her role working in student support in Birmingham, our reporter Anya is collecting the afternoon registers. Most of the classes she visits appear to be functioning properly. But there's not much actual learning going on in this class. Music's being played, people are shouting and sitting on desks, and throughout it all, the teacher sits at the back texting. same day, doing her rounds taking attendance, Anya enters an empty classroom and finds a teacher who has no students to teach. Hiya. You do anyone in here? No, just changing. Are you ready? This is not normal, is it? No, I've got a feeling that the text didn't go out. So we texted them last week to let them know that that was cancelled. Right. I've got a feeling the rearranged class wasn't wasn't sent out that that didn't so desk to assume that the class is cancelled. Yeah. Well, it would, that would sound about right. Yeah. I thought somebody would have turned up. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Not a good start. I know. <laughs> See you in a bit. 
Working in student support, our reporter Anya discovers more classes are being cancelled. She runs into a student in reception who wants to complain about being messed around by the college. Yeah, we usually send a text and an email, but this morning we just sent a text just because it's so last minute. Um, so I'm absolutely pissed off. So I've had to come here and there's no teacher. It's the next day. Anya talks to the man in charge of managing Birmingham's teachers. He's in a regretful mood. He admits the college isn't doing a good enough job. It's bad all these classes that are cancelled, really, isn't it? No, I, I, I put myself in their shoes, obviously, I'm upset. So it's very unethical, basically. Very unethical. We teach ethical business in the classroom, business ethics, but when it comes to what's happening under our umbrella, it's just not fair for these students now. Me? We know we're trying our best to help them, but it's something which is. That's what happens when you, when you grow too stupidly too soon. We talked to English teacher Emil, who worked for LSBF in London, but left last year after a dispute over pay. He says he witnessed similar complaints from students to the ones Anya has heard in Birmingham. Students were unhappy, clearly unhappy, because they were shifted from pillar to post. There was a couple of students in my class who said, we can't do law, and that's what we signed up for. Some students didn't know where the classes were or what times they were. Timetables were rescheduled at the drop of a hat. Obviously, these people are paying thousands. It could be their family's life savings. You know, you knew that they had a legitimate grievance with, with problems, and you can only really say to them, um, I'll look into it, or I'll, I'll try and help you out as far as I, I can. Next, there's trouble at LSBS Birmingham campus. There's trouble breaking out between students on the London School of Business and Finance's Birmingham campus. Our reporter Anya is going into the Birmingham offices when she witnesses this disturbance. Back in London, Sam's talking to a member of the security staff who has had to deal with an argument between students earlier that day. There was a lot of shouting earlier. Shouting, not fights, or fights as well. <laughs> Another day, and Sam's on his lunch break. When he speaks to a canteen worker, he discovers that even this staff member is subjected to angry outbursts. How is it working here for you at the moment? Is it okay or...? Not really. Just what? the student are both and they are shouting. They are sometimes they are showing strange signs. Like, I'm going to kill you or something like that. And we call to police, call to security. Mm. All right. Every day. Not what students might expect at a private business school. Another day, and Sam meets two foreign students in the corridor studying at St. Patrick's another college in the LSBF group that shares their new court campus building. Sorry, I want to see someone uh, inside the head of the department for the business. Okay. They appear to be upset by the behaviour they're experiencing around them on campus. Um, we would like to move our class to another class. Okay. We've been complaining about it. Right. But there's so much issues going on down there. What are the issues? Fighting. So what sort of stuff's happening? Arguing, arguing, fighting, what, physical, physical fighting. They nearly got physical today. They nearly got physical today. We had to actually break it up. 
What does the teacher do when this happens? He tries to um, stop the meeting. Right. But um, it continues for a while. We just, just want to move classes from we just want our to class from group 22 to another group. group okay. Is, is it affecting your education? Before? Yes, it is. As the students complain to Sam, another shouting match breaks out in the corridors behind them. Eventually, our reporter Sam goes to find an LSBF member of staff to deal with the students' problems. In Birmingham, our undercover reporter Anya is working as a member of the LSBF student support team. Anya is covering the reception desk. One of the security staff tells her that some students are members of street gangs. Later the same day, and Anya's in a team meeting with a manager who also talks about the issue. <laughs> There's a situation going on where they split themselves because someone's from and someone's from and someone's from it will not work if one person's from a different place. Definitely not because if you hear the conversation. Yeah, I've heard them. I've heard them in the first time. I'm walking up to and that's what it's all about. They don't communicate between areas. As much as, as much as we need to be weeding these people out, the worst offenders, especially the ones that are very proactive within the gangs, overall, we're still college. LSBF told us aggressive or violent behaviour was completely unacceptable to them. The manager's discussion about gangs related to one specific issue, when a local gang attempted to gain admission to the campus resolved by police. They are unaware of any gang members currently studying at any of their campuses and have been extremely successful in controlling and preventing inappropriate behaviour in a challenging environment, partly through judicious use of security staff. In a statement, LSBF said, we take enormous pride in the quality of courses and the student experience which we provide to our 38,000 students worldwide, reflected in recent reviews which confirm confidence in LSBF's management of academic standards and the reliability and accuracy of its public information. In certain instances, the allegations raised by ITV are simply false. In other instances, the material has been presented often out of context to completely mischaracterize LSBF and its 500 employees. ITV has chosen to rely on an extremely small selective number of examples, including contrived covertly recorded discussions with junior staff. ITV chose not to engage with LSBF student body as a whole. Nevertheless, as a responsible institution which constantly strives for improvement and whose overwhelming concern is for the interests of its students, LSBF takes allegations of this kind very seriously. We will review the broadcast and, where necessary, investigate further and take such action as may be appropriate. We will continue to engage fully with our stakeholders and the UK higher education authorities in order to ensure that LSBF continues to meet and exceed all standards of best practice and the expectations of our students. We've also been looking at many other private colleges and the wider immigration system for international students for the last year and we've discovered that some students are getting shortchanged. There's this belief, apparently by the Home Secretary and the government, that people going to these colleges benefit the economy. They don't. People going to universities, proper universities, benefit the economy. People going to these colleges don't benefit anyone other than the people who run the colleges. They're leaving students in a terrible position We met Rahman in Forest Gate, East London, where he's staying with his friend. What I do, 
I go to the shops and restaurants to do work, but not permanently. You got a previous experience? Yeah, I've worked in the shop. What shop? It's a, like a grocery shop. Where are you from? I'm from Bangladesh. How many is your visa? Uh, I don't have visas, actually. How long have you been in this country? Like eight years. Eight years? Yeah. Do you got the right for work? Uh, no, at this moment not. Wrong. You don't have the right for work? No. Okay. No problem. Thank you very much. International students can end up on an endless merry-go-round from one college to the next. Rahman was hooked by the glossy prospectus of his first college. They're showing the big buildings on it and the big round grass. English style of building like the Oxford universities. They were taking me to the college from uh, Whitechapel and I was saying where is the field or where is the building and he opened the door and I said why he's going into this uh, little tiny door so he went in and he said this is your college and go up it's the college like two or three rooms after six months that college was shut down by the home office I had to run through another college around 3,000 pounds again. But after six months, home office closed them or what they did, I don't know, but it was something clumsy going on. I went to third college. On that college, I have to pay 1,500 pounds to enroll again. That college was were all right, but uh, they were suffering of license problem on that time. So I have to jump to another college, number four. I, don't, I can't remember how much I paid because we don't have the license right now, so you have to go another college. So number five, I came here, I was 22, and now I'm 30. I lost my everything and I, I can't go to in front of my parents. Empty-handed, no, it's not possible. Your mother and father, they will take you back, but your respect will not be remain the same. We are students, we are here, we suffered here. We just pay the money and we just see the system what is going on. If they call me bogus student, I will tear them up in front of me because I'm not going to listen about it because I paid the monies. I will finish my course here, then I will go back home. What should I say? My, in my age, people, they're doing doctorate now. And I'm still working in the kitchen. How much have you paid for your British education to all the five colleges? Until today, it was like around... If you, 30 to 35,000 pounds and it's worth nothing.